Welcome back, everybody. It's me, the professor. Today, we're going to review deck boxes, magic card sleeves, boxes, because many Magic the Gathering people ask, how the hell do you store your magic stuff? All right, so let's take a look. Uh, let's start with the most way not to do it. Uh, this is old school. My friend Clint here is going to be an assistant. Clint, oh, what? Hi. Clint, yeah, hi. <laughs> Clint, what? Yeah, you, you are uh, my uh, pro protege. This is a three ring binder, old school. And this is in, and I want you guys to look at this. This is an overstuffed three ring binder of uh, Magic the Gathering cards. This is clearly not the way to store your cards because look what's going on in the ring part. Look at this section here. You'll notice that the weight, imagine the weight pressure down. This part here is having it smashed, right? That causes binder leaks. Back in the days, they take these binders, they stack the binders, and then basically you have alpha, beta, unlimited cards all damaged. So this is not a way to do it. If you insist to use these old school binders, you will do that, you would put it like this. That's what I would do, okay? Just keep it up. Another thing to worry about is uh, uh, dust and crap. I noticed over the years that dust and um, just a lot of, you know, crap that goes in there and what happens is the, the cars get like the grime and crap on them just naturally so what i would recommend doing is using like a dust cloth or something to prevent uh, so it uh, doesn't have dust on top if you insist on the three ring binder effect the reason i would use something like this is for basically what this binder is being used for by its owner not me is very yes. inexpensive cards yeah. to be organized to be flipped quickly flipped through and and some of these cards are like double stacked in there this is a proxy like it's expensive guys it's a proxy don't don't think it's yeah and so if you're just looking for some easy way of flipping through like this is a commander binder this is something look, you know, look how fast this is very quick there's, there's so four of it's, it's quick but this is not going to keep your cards in good condition this is basically the cheapest way to visually organize your cards Actually, uh, he's correct, but it's not the cheapest way. The cheapest way is this. This yeah. are these are uh, less than a dollar. Yeah, these are boxes yeah. you can buy at a store. Five thousand copy boxes are five to six dollars. Uh, BCW supplies, mm -hmm. right here. There it is. BCW supplies. Here's the trick. I realized that if you are uh, trying to save some money, you have a lot of cards like myself. You basically buy them in volume. So I think if you buy 75 or 100 boxes, you pay like $3 or something a box. Versus, and free shipping. Versus you go retail, it's $6 a box. Something like that, For right? Like 5, For one 5,000 count box. So it depends on what route you're going. Regardless, he's correct. What these boxes are is you, they're, they're laid flat. You make them yourself. And then what you have here is this is the cheap, cheap way to do it. Now, look what's going on. Hold on. Before we do that, that's perfect. Do you see what happened there? This is a horrible setup because what happens with these is you always have to have either some styrofoam or some nice um, toilet paper, like, like nice toilet paper, toilet paper, whatever, right? So you don't cause this warping or bending. These are ice and collector edition cards. Only and, ice, don't know. Yeah, international edition cards. <laughs> and these are, um, these are sl sleeved and also perfect fitted. So the corners can get damaged really easily. So be very, very careful. Uh, now that I have this out, the other way you can do this is the traditional sleeve. This is a regular sleeve size, okay? Um, it's used like the Ultra Pros um, for any kind of gaming. These, this one is what I call uh, KMC Perfect Fits. See how tight it is? It, it's really tight. And I, don't, I honestly don't like this. this these are cleanse cards. I don't like this for this particular reason. I'll show you exactly why. When you sell or trade cards or you're shifting to like manipulate you know, your, your decks, you have to really work hard not to – see what I just did there? I have to bend this little thing here on purpose, which causes like a little damage onto the, the sleeve. Then I have to actually – be very careful touching the cart only. Get this over my thumb. I'm purposely going to exaggerate this. Then slowly. I'm not going to bend it and pull it out. Most people, most players, what's going to happen? I'll just exaggerate this. Are going to go like this. You're going to, you're going to poke at it, right? 
and then you're, you're totally screwed. Totally screwed. Edwin, Ed, Edwin's filming. Edwin, do you, you have any comments? Actually, I do. Yeah. Um, could you hold this for a sec, Clint? Sure. There is another way that I actually take them out. Are these all double sleeve? Here, come over here, Edwin. You can. Well, I can just do it from here. Okay. So uh, there's another way that I actually take double sleeve ones out as well. So I assume these are from the bottom. I'll actually kind of lightly tap on the top and push them out just ah, like that. Yep. And then I'll just grab it like that. Okay. So that, that's what I do. Well, that, uh, that's a better technique, but here's, here's the problem. And we all know this. Speed. When you are a player or a buyer or vendor, right? Oh, you yeah. have thousands of cards to mess around with and make decks. And yeah. also speed. What if you're a player and you need to switch out your cards quickly to make your deck? Yeah, there's it's, no. It's not fast. So that's exactly what perfect. <laughs> it's not fast. For, is you put your cards in perfect fits, and then they never leave perfect fits. They sure. Just stay in perfect fits. But and people so, have to rotate their cards. One more tip I want to show. You don't have to take them out of the perfect fits. Your card. Once you put a card in a perfect fit, yeah, you it just stays leave it in. in a perfect fit. And then if you, you need to switch out your cards and put, you just you're just changing the outside sleeves. So the only time I ever take cards out of perfect fits is to sell them. And which I'm not a vendor. That doesn't happen all the time. It happens once every like six months. And so okay. I understand your concerns. Guys, put in the comments below. That's, no, it's a good debate. Edward, can we hold this? Yeah. I, 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 one I, more thing I yeah. want to show. When you're putting them in, sometimes when you if you push on the top, what will happen is the card will slide inside like that and see how it came off. Yeah. So there's a different way I actually put them in just to give everybody that tip. So you, you get it Slowly, started. Yep. You get it started. Then at some point, the tension of the sleeve stops it. So you lift it up a little bit, just get your finger on it, and you can slide it in like that. Right. So after perfect fit, to put it in, you will see a little bit of the top come out if you do it that way. Yep. Good point, Edwin, and make sure you hit the focus as we... Yeah, okay. yeah I've been doing so, that. So, so there's actually something important that actually um, he makes a good point. Clay makes a good point. Something that's really missing here, what he's saying is he's actually incorrect, and I do a lot of... Okay. And I'm saying this from an investor high-end mode because I know a lot of people... You know, look, sorry, there's a cop or something. Um, a lot of people in collector community ask me, why don't you perfect fit the cars? Does it safer? Not talking about as a player, I'm talking purely as a collector and investor. Mm -hmm. The reason why is not only is it damage, is that when you have that kind of pressure, it affects the potential risk of bending the car, which is a surface flaw. As you know, centering, corners, edges, and surface. The other problem is, this is the biggest problem. Perfect fits actually warp your cards. They squeeze the cards. Imagine, some of the builds for the perfect fits are so tight. They push them so tight, right? They actually, yeah. yes, they actually warp them. Perfect fits are so tight in the beginning that sometimes you have to push them, right? Yeah. So hard to get it in nice and fit. The problem with that is you see a lot of edge damage here. And you see sometimes a little bit of wear, um, of warping because they're so tight. Now, yeah, so, after, after you get a card in for a while, it's been used, sure. Go ahead, Edwin. What so I, one comment I was going to make is I have I buy perfect fits in bulk. And if I'm putting them in and they're tight, I just toss that just one toss and go them. to the next one. I anticipate one. Like just throwing away at least 10% of all the perfect yeah. fits I use because you go and it'll be too tight. And it's just like, no. Nope, yeah, away. just toss it. Just toss it. They're they're it's not worth cheap. it. It's not worth it. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so uh, we talked about perfect fix. Uh, Edwin had a good point. Let's put this one. Where's the sleeve? Uh, I, I put a new one in for you. Okay, so other than perfect fits, there's a thing called card saver ones. I talked about this before, but these are the flimsy, rigid um, type of uh, uh, thing made by, I think, Ultra Pro. And they're less than 10 cents a pop. What happens is... You just take a card like this, and this is not very expensive, sorry the way I handle it, it's an evasion card. So the way to do this is just take some practice. Do not just do this for fun, because you'll, with alpha cards or whatever. You basically, what I do is I use this finger here, I have a double action here, and I lift, like I have a lift up, right? So you have a nice entryway. Don't just do it, I've seen people just go like this, like, you don't um, want to catch an it's, edge. It's absolutely the worst thing. You'll chip the crap out of this. This actually happened when we were out there in the Waz deal where the guy was taking unlimited ruby and just, I, says, I stopped him instantly. I was like, stop what you're doing. Let me just show you. So what I do is I take the pinky. So I, so I have a left hand. I put a pinky in my right hand. I snap it open. I start out with a little edge. Get it in. Slide it in. Don't squeeze too hard to bend and just slide it in. Yeah, people, That's what she said. People said, yeah. People said, this is a Rudy video all the way, but 
People will say, go like this. No, you don't want to ever do this because it's the same idea as the perfect fit. You don't want to press this. You want to have a nice slide surface and get it set. I like to get a center. Reason why, I, I, maybe I'm a perfectionist, but a lot of people um, like to be sloppy with their graded cards. They like to put the card closer to the top. I like to have it more in the middle, not in the very bottom. Here's why. When you grade a card to Beckett or PSA, and I've been doing this for so long, um, the odds, you wanna make sure that your cards are presented in a way that you have not only taken care of them, but also they're not gonna risk damage. If the card is too tough, high in the top, what happens is during packaging transit, right? And God forbid you actually put them in cardboard protectors and then you have wrap, whatever, right? Protect it. There's, cards actually fall out if they're too close to the top. And what happens is I've actually seen people have black lotuses on the top of the tip. Edge gets worn because they package it like crap. And what happens? The graders are like, well, we didn't do, they call them up and be like, hey, John, yeah, uh, sorry, we saw your Lotus stick out and it got damaged through shipping. What? But it's in a card saver one, it doesn't move. No, it actually needs to go down enough. If you go too far, the pressure going too far, think about this, the grader is gonna go like this. He's gonna pick the card up, right? Pull it out and look at the card. If this card is all the way to all the bottom, look at that, all the deep. He has to open, look how far, he has to open this thing very far up, look at that. Go all the way in and then pull it out. And then you don't see this, but look at, there's a resistance on the corners. Watch this, when I go like this, right here. Look, look, there's a resistance on the corners. I can barely pull it out, right? Mm -hmm. Clint, try pulling it out on the very bottom. Very, like, really no, 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 no. Make a hole, make a hole like that. Squeeze a little bit like that. And, but just pull it out. Feel, feel the resistance. Yeah. 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 Do you feel resistance? Mm -hmm. What if I did the middle like that? Like that. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just exactly. Right so, so what happens is the grader is going to sit there and be like, you know, he's gonna pull it out hard and what will happen is your card will probably get damaged and then you're gonna say, well, how is that my, is it my fault? No, it's not. And it is because uh, the graders received the card, but if you, as the customer, provided uh, a sleeve or something that was not, you know, you know basically you're giving them a, a bad opportunity to make mistakes. It's human error, right? That's huge. All right, so let's talk about uh, this uh, binders. Clint, what are you talking about uh, uh, this kind of binder? What do so you have here? This is, there's lots of binders like this one. Um, I really like these uh, Dragon Hide Legion binders. Uh, but they're binders that have sort of two characteristics different than this type of binder here. And one is uh, there's no rings, right? These binders are all... Uh, fabric, and so there's no opportunity to get those those binder dents. What? Who's Woz? That's Steve Wozniak. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I, by the way, side note, are those the only ice lightning bolts signed by the Woz oh, ever most in the world? certainly. Are you ever going to sell these? Uh, You know, you never know, but not for a while. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so one, they don't have the, the binders, but then also... They are fabric behind the plastic, um, which just helps to, uh, makes things slide out in and, easy, in and out easier. Uh, and they, they catch a lot more of the dust so that not crap gets stuck in there, right? I, I, I do agree with Clint on this. I like the fabric. I like, uh, every brand has their own fabric type of thing. And I also like the seal right here with the ribbon, um, yeah. yeah. Now, now that one, there's one, there's one problem to this though. Um, is, is the warp. Have you ever seen one? And I've had a problem with like monster. So be clear, guys. There's the cheaper monster plasticky version that warps. This is the higher. These are, these are, these like are the higher end, uh, kind of a cardboard backing, like right? Thicker, stronger, yeah, are, and there's a wider base. So as you get more cards, like there's a lot of cards mm -hmm. here. It doesn't just. Uh, you know how it is, like super thin, and it just warps up, and it, yeah. it's horrible, right? So, the, my my problem with the monster ones, open this up, um, the the plasticky guys, you guys know this, is that what happens is this cards so here, the inner ones, as more cards happen, the mm -hmm. design it doesn't actually stick up and cause it like this, 
effect, uh -huh. this actually warps. Yeah. Have you seen that ever with this kind of binder? I have. Yeah, so Edwin, you have. This you have. This one's yeah. really thick, and uh -oh. it's getting, it's, it's because it's 100% full, they push that boundary. But in general, they gave a bit more slack here. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the, see, so notice that. That's right. The design is great. The inner is great. What I like about this binder is a double, a double version. Yeah, they do a really good yes. job on these binders. Uh, other companies have one, imagine one single spiral mm -hmm. spine, yeah. and then basically you're stuck. So, how, so, 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 so do you like this or not? What do you think? I, I do. Okay. There's, well, I have a binder like this. You guys have probably seen it in my videos if you're watching. Like when I'm pulling them out to build decks that keep expensive cards in a binder like this. There's something that I learned to watch out for. Sometimes what will happen is a card will get out a little bit like yeah. this. And you gotta watch because then oh, as you're moving, yes. see how this bends on that seam? Mm -hmm. And if a card is like that, you've got a possibility of putting like some crease on the card where that comes out if you're to come this way. Absolutely. So, and that doesn't mean these are terrible. It just means like I'm very careful to make sure they're pushed all the way in when I'm yeah. using my binders like that. You still have to be careful when you're handling cards. Yeah. yeah. But like that is apps. I've seen that happen, right? I've yeah. had it happen to me. And, yep. know, I've bent cards that way. And so like if I'm ever carrying my binder, like if, if I've got it all closed and I'm carrying it and something like impacts one side, mm. I always like I stop and I go through and I check because something that Whoa, impacted, what's the hell? <laughs> it's, a, it's a print sheet of two dollar bills. By the way, guys, in Edwin's channel, uh, there might be some videos with the Waz, and there also will be, yeah. there will be, and also this we met really cool we met the Waz, but yeah. there's a story behind this, guys. And no, Clint does not do this as a job. Yeah, yeah. If you're the Secret Service, two dollar bills that are all connected. Contact the Waz. Uh, don't contact Clint. That's all I gotta <laughs> say. All right, so let's continue on. Edwin, why don't you go through these boxes? These are yours. Um, or are these cleanser boxes? Well, these are these are these cleanser boxes. This is the mega box. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. let's yeah. start with these. Yeah. Oh, that one. Then, yeah. Then do those because those are his. Those are huge. These are really nice. I really like these as deck boxes. These ones are the sort of more base and model. I own a lot of these. Like, I love deck. these. I love these boxes. They have really good magnets. Very, They're really solid. Very strong. Yep. Um, I do wish. Sometimes they were a little bigger, so you could fit like a full hundred card commander deck, but mm. you can get ones bigger. I found if your commander deck is single sleeved, you can get it in there. Yeah, if it's sleeve, double sleeved, you, you can't can get it in there. You cannot. And so these are really nice. They're really sturdy. They, you know, they're very well made. I really like these for carrying decks around. Yep. Um, I very much prefer this version though, which is just a little bit bigger. Well, let me throw one point in yeah, before sure. you go to that one. There's one issue I have with these, and it's this. You can. Mm. You can actually get it uh -oh. to open up because oh, it's a yeah. magnetic open. Well, do, that, do it again. Yeah, so since this is magnetic, you can, you oh, can actually get wow. it to open up like that. Yeah. And that, it, that's it, a bit of a If concern. you just lose track of the side or whatever. If yeah, yeah. yeah, if it's in your backpack like and you uh, open into something, you know, it yeah. can come Always open. pack your backpack tightly. Exactly. We should probably show backpack, my backpack too. Okay. Your backpack is a good, is, a, is an important thing. Right? And so these ones, and there's, there's lots of different versions of this type of box oh fancy where they've got you know okay. a spot for your deck and then a spot for um, dice and accessories yes uh, and these are just really nice because you can you know that is a nice. spot for your weed right obviously guys <laughs> you know you know i really like the professor's videos but the thing is we're not focusing on msrp and the ben test or whatever we're doing nice more box. Real these life, really nice. kind of a conglomeration. These are something like $25. Yeah. I definitely like that. So guys, obviously, yeah, and the can I fit a 100 card double sleeve commander in that? I have never tried, but I don't know. You just compare the width, I guess. The width, the width this way is what matters. So we just hold it side by side like this. So how much are these? Oh, yeah, it's wider. So how much are these boxes? Maybe you can. Uh, idea. These, ones, these ones you can pick up for something like $15. These ones you can pick up for $20. Um, if you are around the magic community long enough people buy a lot of these and you can find them like i got this one used for free in a trade right that's where i got most of my boxes that are this size is for free in a trade and so i highly suggest you know if you're trying to save some money you do that but they're also just not that not oh. that overly expensive uh, side note guys uh when i was talking about the professor if you guys want more in-depth msrp you know specific ones he has lots of great reviews sure uh, i brought this water here on purpose is because people always drink their waters by their damn cards Rudy Fina. Uh, make sure you close the caps or just don't do it at all put it in an isolated area 
I've seen so many people drink coffee, Diet Coke, spill it on their cards, and they basically say swear words. That's actually exactly why I double sleeve my cards. Yes. Because I'm paranoid about spilling But don't spilling just water what I do when I'm dealing with high end cards, I do zero liquids. People always ask me to, before you handle especially high end cards or any cards, I wash my hands with soap and water, or I use alcohol like sanitizer and dry really yeah. well. I talked to I, I talked to I talked to the grading guys and you know what happens is it actually you know open boosters uses his blue gloves he only does that because he sweats because he's nervous and you know he's he's excited he he's, his but but he's very passionate yeah right but yeah. Uh, unfortunately the, well the, the the myth is that you don't you're not supposed to touch the cards with your hands you can oh, because okay. once you wash and dry them the oils are not enough to really affect the card. All right, sorry. So, even when I'm yeah. handling cards that are in sleeves, I still like, you know, you keep have a play mat, keep everything clean, keep your hands clean. Because even these nice uh, sleeves will still collect the grime yes. and stuff on them. And it's, you know, gross. All right, and well, let's look at your monstrosity. What is this? So, I've this had a lot awesome. of boxes over the years, and this is absolutely my favorite box. Now, I'll give you a couple reasons why, but the first thing is that uh, there's several versions of this box. It's made by Dex, and um, D one of the versions... D-E-X. D-E-X. Yeah. One of the versions I have has a magnetic seal here. This one's actually Velcro, and that's why, right there. There's a lot of weight in this box, and wow. it's not yeah. flying open, right? Wow. So now if you get okay. that off... Okay, so it has a... Velcro, oh wow, nice. So you see, like, this is the company that makes it DEX, and you've got this nice Velcro seal, and it's velvety inside. Up. Now you also see it comes with these deck boxes, and these deck boxes are really nice because you can get your finger in there to pull them out without causing an issue. Wow. And this actually only usually comes with two of them, but I have several of these, so I just do four of them inside. And I don't know where my gem bag is. Is, That's fine. You have a bag. Yeah. It's somewhere around here. Look, can you look at that little black bag with the gems? So, anyways, the way I normally travel, and this is actually how I put them back in. I'll like make sure they're lifted up, and then just slide it in like that. And I'll put my gem bag right here. Now, I like this box because I can carry four decks, and if these decks are all double sleeved, then I can have the deck and the sideboard inside each of these little boxes. And if I'm good at a tournament, what I'll there, there you go. This is like where I keep all my life counters and stuff. I just does that come in. with the decks? No, it doesn't. Okay, that's different. But, you know, most game stores have stuff like this. And this is just like a little gem bag with a nice inside. And they usually come with a pull string. And this is funny. Since I've got, you know, my wife and daughter at the house, I have lots of these at my house. These are oh, hair ties. God, they're everywhere. They're, they're, they're um, <laughs> cloth on the outside and right. they're elastic, which makes them literally perfect for wrapping these things up. Wow. Yeah. They, they just, and when they wear out, you just like throw them away and go get another one. It's the perfect thing for keeping these bags close. It even looks nice, right? Something funny about these hair ties. As a man, I did not understand how hard it is to keep track of hair ties uh -huh. until I had long hair, <laughs> right? I was always looking for hair ties. It was the uh -huh. most obnoxious thing ever. And I realized that my wife is always doing that. And so... As a man, if you find <laughs> hair ties laying around your house, find a spot to put them for your wife. She will appreciate it greatly. It's Good something tip. that women yeah. struggle with Good that points. men just don't even know about. So Clint had the man bun before. Clint, real quick, why did you go, go away from that? So, the man bun. I uh, have always wanted to try having long hair. I had never done it before. And like almost at the exact same time I had met Dan... I started deciding to grow my hair out. But it wait, wait, was, what does that have to do with me? It was just about the same time. But <laughs> okay. You're, Are you trying to say that? You're Are you trying to say that? Well, Dan's a hippie. So what I'm just going to do that. No, it's because a lot of like the viewers thought uh, that, you uh, know, with, they didn't know that yeah, that was yeah. like the first time I okay, had long okay. hair, right? So yeah. that's the first time I'd ever had long hair. And what I discovered was it's, Super annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it's always in your face. Kind of like this, right? This gets super annoying. Oh, it's on your ears? No, I do this oh. because I hate shaving. I don't do this for style reasons. I don't do this for any other reason other than I hate shaving. And it's just shaving this part. I don't grow that much hair on this part. Because you face. both have this goatee thing going yeah. on. So I hate shaving, but you just have to shave this. Yeah, but it's just it, I don't grow hair nearly as fast oh, here as I do Oh, I see. And so I can get away. Is that the same with you, Edwin? Same idea. No, no. Uh, my wife loves this. Yeah. And wait, anything wait, she... that the I'd wear a clown hat everywhere <laughs> if the wife loved it. So, so yeah, she, when I, I grew this out because I was being lazy, but I kept it because she liked it. There you go. Brother. There you go. 
All right, there you go. We went wives. Okay, okay so, so yeah, some they, more about maps. This. Yep. So now these decks oh. that are in here, uh, this is a 75 uh, card deck, so it's 60 cards, and then the sideboard. Now, as you can see, I, oh, I'll just pull it out. Double sleeved. Uh, they're all double sleeved, and I actually always keep the sideboard facing the other direction. Sure. But what's this is actually my vintage deck. So what's really nice about these is like sometimes what I'll do if I'm like at a tournament and I don't want to constantly keep taking this out and carrying it around, I'll just take out the bag and the deck, close this, or maybe even like a playmat as well, because like I can keep playmats here. Then I just close this guy up, and this goes back in my backpack, and what I carry around between the actual rounds of the tournament is just these guys. Yeah. Hmm. And so and everything else stays nice and secure inside there. But I also like these because if I'm gonna have a commander deck sometimes. Maybe you can just keep like three boxes inside the deck and then have like a commander deck then with a gem bag there. That's about the exact right size for like a hundred card commander deck that's all double sleeved. And I like having this, this, these actually also fit here. So you could move a bunch of these deck boxes here. And I like having the ability to have several play mats because oftentimes when you meet up with a friend, you know, they don't have a play mat. And then inside of here- dollars bills going on, everybody has Well, them. yeah, this is the Waz thing. There'll be another video on that. Actually, I don't know if I want to show that. That's that's the Waz's card and the PSA guy's card. I don't know if we want to show that. So anyways, like, uh, but as you can see, sometimes I'll put cards and stuff at I'm the listening. bottom of this box. All of it. Yeah, so well, yeah, Waz was right there. Oh, no, I'm listening. And that's Stephen Menendian. Just got that one, too, this weekend. So, um, wow. So sometimes I'll also keep cards. Sorry, there. guys. Actually, I, I, I had a, 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 a lotion moment. A lotion moment. So also beneath these boxes in one of the containers is actually where I keep my DCI card normally. I don't know. Maybe maybe I took it out. Well, that's probably in the was thing. Right there. Oh, there it is. It's a DCI. So I don't know. I don't know if I want to show my actual number, but there's my actual DCI card, um, and I've I've had that for an awful long time. I actually had one of the earliest DCI numbers, but there was a point where they changed their system, and mine was so early they actually canceled my number. And reissued me a card with this number on it that's like way higher, but my original DCI number was very low. Yeah. So that was kind of unfortunate. They didn't give me a choice on that, they just did it. So, anyways, um, so yeah, I'll just lay down like new cards or something on the bottom of this and then like throw in some like deck boxes in the bottom of it. And yeah, so I love this container because it keeps all my decks. I can do double sleeve 60 card decks, I can do commander decks, I can change it around for whatever my needs are, and it stays nice and sealed. And I think it's got a nice presentation, you know, with the felt inside and like the really nice seal and stuff. So that looks like the most. So how much is that one? I think it was like fifty dollars. What? Like this is fifty dollars only? I, I think this it was. was. I, I can't remember exactly. This, that makes no sense. Twenty or fifty? I would get the. I, I didn't know it's bulky. That yeah, I, that's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. Last thing is, uh, do you guys have any idea if there's like you know how theft happens? So yeah. are there like. Uh, you know, like trackable ones, noise making ones. Does that crap happen? Yeah, yeah. Is there... so they're actually. I don't know of any deck boxes that themselves are trackable. But like, you're an engineer. You can install a GPS. But you don't need to be an engineer. There's there's devices you can already get that basically have a trackable device that you can build put onto anything you want. What? So yeah, there's different products that are out there where you can literally get like a little chip and put it on it. Like for key rings, people put it on sometimes. Oh. Yeah, there's. I forget the name. Edwin. Of you guys, link, link will below. Edwin's uh, channel is uh, at 5,000 subs. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you. And yeah, uh, uh, thank you guys ra round the applause. Round the applause. Awesome, All you. right. And then, woo! Edwin! Yeah. Woo! And so we're, uh, uh, Edwin's going to have a video. Uh, probably, Edwin, you should do a video about uh, like a Q&A and also maybe do a video on security of your magic stuff. You know, it's you know, funny, that'd like, be kind of cool. I was cool. trying to decide what I wanted to do when I hit 5,000, but then like in the last like month, like all of a sudden there's been this big in rush of subscribers. So it had this nice like slow increase and all of a sudden it did this. And so like I wasn't ready for it when it just suddenly hit. That's cool. So that's all kind of unfortunate because I wanted to do something I'm fun. For you, but that's I'll just have cool. to be kind of belated with it, I guess. All right. Fun. So guys, thanks again for your time. Uh, guys, any other comments or questions? Tell us what you guys think. What kind of boxes you guys like. Yeah, if you guys have a box that's better than these... Show me. I'd yeah. love to see it. <laughs> Put in a link below of a video or a link of a website, whatever you want. And uh, thanks again, guys. Take care. Okay. Bye, everybody.